we're down to the wire on Thanksgiving. Maybe you forgot to do your shopping. Maybe you just don't like doing things at all. Doesn't matter because I'm going to help you figure out how to save Thanksgiving at the last minute. Step one, go ahead and get the idea of having a whole turkey out of your head right now. You what? No turkey? You f There's no time. It's frozen. It's going to take days to thaw. It's just not happening. Aunt Agatha is going to be over in three hours. So here's your options. Okay, one. We can either go grab something like we carry here in our store, these turkey legs, super easy, really convenient. Grab a bunch because I don't know how much your family eats. Another option, grab a ham. That only takes a couple hours to prep and it's really easy. You mostly just have to unwrap it. But don't do what I did and forget that there's a little plastic piece on the inside because that tastes really bad. I like microplastics, not macro plastics. And if you're not into eating meat, that's cool too. We got a lot of options for you there. So there's a plenty of vegetarian and vegan options. But one of my favorites right now that we've got are these celebration roasts from Field Roast. It's awesome. Vegetarian. All that good stuff. Check one of those out. It cooks in the oven in a very short amount of time. Step two. It's time to get stuffed. You can do this really easily. Look, stovetop is a classic. Cliches exist for a reason. They're easily pleasing everybody. Grab yourself a box of this. You're almost ready to go. That stuff gets made conveniently on the stovetop very quickly. If you're trying to keep it low carb in the stuffing game, check out this keto stuffing from Dojoy Breads. They've got a recipe right in the back of the package and it tastes awesome. Step three, mashed potatoes. First off, mashed potatoes are super easy to make. Boil potatoes, mash them, add some butter, a little bit of uh, milk or cream, salt, garlic powder, boom, you're on your way. But it's clear to me that you're a procrastinator. So at this point, your best option is probably to grab some of the microwave ones from someone like Bob Evans. They're actually surprisingly pretty good. And if you do some of those same tricks, add a little garlic powder, zhuzh it up, no one in the family's gonna know, unless I tell them. Well, turns out sometimes I forget stuff too. Uh, like, how can I forget arguably the best part of the meal? Food loop. Or, as you heathens like to call it, gravy. Get it in a jar. Heat it up. Next. Step four. Green bean casserole. Green bean casserole was invented in the Campbell Soup Test Kitchen and has infiltrated our families over the years and apparently also this grocery store. But here's a recipe down in the link. It's really easy to make. You just need some canned green beans and some other stuff. Don't worry. I'm not eating it. Step five, rolls. Arguably the most important part of the meal. Go ahead and check the bakery out in your grocery store. We always have tons of the best ones. These are King's Hawaiian rolls. We got an entire rack. And if that doesn't work, check the frozen section because there might still be some left over there. And there would have been more left there if you had remembered this before today. Step six, mac and cheese. Okay, listen, I'm gonna let you in on a little uh, Mark secret here. This is one of the easiest mac and cheese recipes, and once you make this, you're gonna be mad that most restaurants make terrible mac and cheese. Here's the deal. It's kind of like the pound cake of macaroni and cheeses. The idea is it's a one to one to one ratio. So you wanna get the same quantity of your pasta, you want to match that quantity with a can of evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed milk, unless you really want to blow it. Evaporated milk, it's not sweetened. Not sweetened milk. And then you're also going to get one pound of cheese. Now, if you want to keep it really simple, go to the deli, get them to slice you a pound of American. It'll hit all of those nostalgic notes you want. Okay? The idea is this. You're going to take a pot, you're going to fill it with your pasta. You're going to cover that pasta with just enough water that the pasta is completely covered. You'll turn it on to high. You're going to boil until it reduces down to kind of a sludgy, starchy mix. When it's sludgy and starchy, and you'll know it won't be quite done all the way, you're going to pour in all of that evaporated milk. Then when that gets to a boil, you're going to add your cheese slowly to mix it in evenly. A pro tip on this one, do not use bagged shredded cheese. They put stuff like cornstarch in it so it doesn't all stick together, but that's going to make your mac and cheese taste weird. Just spend the money on this one. You're already late. Last but not least, salt and pepper to taste. Step seven, cranberry sauce. Well, at this point, you're too late to make it fresh. So you've got two options. You either go classic jellied, you can serve the little slices on a plate like my mom used to, or you can get the whole cranberry style in the can. And then if you just mash it up with your fork, people will think you made it yourself. Step eight, time for a little drink. Listen, if you want to enjoy some alcoholic beverages this Thanksgiving, I get it, and here's what you could do. Look, you could just get a 30 rack of Keystone Lights, but let's class it up a little bit. My recommendation, go a little fancy on everyone. Grab a bottle of rosé. Here's one of my personal favorites right now. It should pair with everything pretty nicely, and it'll make your family think that you hadn't forgot about them. 
Step nine, it's pie time. This one's easy. Go to the frozen section. Go to the bakery. The bakery might have a couple left. But again, we're right before Thanksgiving. They probably don't. But you know who probably does? Sarah Lee. Head over to the frozen section, grab yourself a pie, and make sure you read the directions very closely. I'm not going to have one of you turn into the Marie Calendar meme that's been going around. Don't burn the pie. It's an easy thing to do. Keep the temp low. A few final pro tips. Don't forget stuff like this. You probably don't have enough pans ready. These are disposable, they're easy, and they're aluminum, so they're probably not as bad as plastic. Look, I get it. You have one bowl, spoon, and fork, and you've been eating cereal with a spatula for the last three weeks. So go out and get some paper plates. Maybe get some reusable cutlery. Come on now. People are coming over. And get some napkins. We're not going to let your cousin Mortimer wipe his hands on the drapes again this year. That was a nightmare. Do you know how much it costs to steam clean drapes? I, I actually don't. I'm asking you. And my final pro tip, maybe grab yourself a bouquet of flowers. It looks nice, everybody loves a solid centerpiece, and you don't really have to do any work, just stick it in one of your old bongs. You've been telling your mom it's a vase for the last 15 years. No more lying. Like this video, leave me a comment telling me what Thanksgiving item you feel like I left out that's really important to you. And of course, hit the bell after you hit that subscribe button so you know when I put out another video yelling at you about your faults. Oh yeah. Send me a picture of your best last-minute Thanksgiving feast items to podcast at junglegyms.com, and I will feature you on the show in a future episode. Next year, be more prepared.